This is part seven in a series entitled Supernatural Manifestations. And please, if you're just watching this for the first time, please watch all the previous teachings because one truth builds upon another. And watch Supernatural Foundations, Supernatural Prayer, Supernatural Revelations so that you can understand uh, the, you know, the truth that we're, we're building. Amen. Because um, you, one truth builds upon another and, and then you enter into the fullness of, 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 of the revelation that's being taught. Amen. So now I want to uh, begin, I want to take off with where we left off in the last teaching with Matthew 14 and 14. And there it says that Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion. And Jesus healed their sick. And again, it is the word orustos. Uh, Jesus healed the weak and the broken in health. Jesus healed the invalids and the critically ill. And uh, Mark 6 and 5 says, And Jesus could do no mighty work except he laid his hands upon a, suit, a few sick folk and healed them. This is when Jesus was in his own hometown. And, and you know, when I first read this, before I read it in the original language, I thought a few sick folk meant people with headaches and stomach aches and back aches. But the Greek word here is aroustos. It means that Jesus healed invalids and critically ill. So now let me ask this question. If these people that Jesus healed were invalids and critically ill, and he did no mighty work there, what was a mighty work? I'm just asking you a question. And so in Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, it says that Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and uh, healing every kind of sickness and every kind of disease among the people. And the word says that the fame of Jesus went throughout all Syria, and they brought to Jesus all sick people that were taken with different diseases and torments, those possessed with devils, those that were lunatic, those that had the palsy, and it says that Christ healed them. So let's look at this now. Jesus healed categories of diseases. So now I'm talking to you about manifestations of healing with a view toward you going out and ministering to people. And allow me to say this, if I must. The closer you get to the pattern, and Jesus gives the revelation of the pattern in Mark 16, the more you will see the presence and the power of God in manifestation. In other words, the pattern is, first I preach Jesus as Lord and Savior. Second, I preach Jesus as Deliverer. Third, I preach Jesus as the Baptizer in the Spirit. So when demons are expelled in the name of Jesus, once um, spiritual darkness departs, the light of his presence, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Light, the Spirit of God, needs to enter. Then the, Jesus says, if you drink any deadly thing, or if you get bitten by a snake, it will not hurt you. So now Jesus is Lord and Savior. Jesus is Deliverer. Jesus is the Baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Now Jesus, who is your Lord, Savior, Deliverer, Baptizer in the Spirit, in the Holy Ghost, he is now your Keeper. Then you preach Jesus as Healer and Miracle Worker. Listen to me carefully. When I have followed this pattern, I have seen signs, wonders, and miracles. Listen to me carefully. The time to minister healing to the sick is right at, is to follow this pattern. Listen to me, listen to me. You get a sinner saved, you can pray for that person who is deaf, blind, crippled, diabetic, got cancer, and if you just teach them the word, you, you, you find out their sins, get them to repent, expel demons, get them filled with the Holy Spirit, show, show them Jesus is their keeper, then, and keep preaching the word in them, get the word in them. And then very shortly after they get saved, pray for their healing, you'll see miracles. You'll see miracles, miracles, miracles. The best time to minister healing to the sick is shortly after they get saved. Let me tell you who else you'll see uh, experience miracles. You'll see people who are sincere, who will say to you, if Jesus heals me, I'll give my heart to Christ. There have been so many people that I have ministered to, and I've said, if God heals you right now, will you give your life to Christ? And those that have meant it have been healed. 
I'm talking about the deaf hearing. I'm talking about miracles of healing right on the spot. I remember a woman who was brought to a meeting in a wheelchair who gave her heart to Jesus. She had kidney problems. God healed her kidneys. She got up out of the wheelchair and she walked. She actually got filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in tongues. And so I have seen a metal turn to bone. I have seen all kinds of creative miracles. Uh, people literally get up out of wheelchairs and walk. Uh, <laughs> And, and, and listen, let me tell you who God heals really, really quickly. Also, is a person who's traditional Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian. Uh, I remember ministering to a woman in New York, and she was a Catholic woman. And she uh, had a walker. Uh, she had a cane, um, you know, because she was legally blind. And she had kidney problems and pain. And, and, and she, you know, she, you know, she, uh, so I led her in a sinner's prayer because she was willing to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Amen. I prayed for her. She began to go, woo, this is a Catholic lady. And God healed her. Her kidneys, her pain all disappeared. Then when I prayed for her, she was legally blind. I could stand a great distance away and she would count my fingers. She would count them. She could see perfectly. That's who you pray for. Uh, uh, Hindus, Muslims, these are the people you pray for. Uh, you'll see more miracles with them uh, that, that uh, if I can say this to you, sometimes you'll see more miracles with all these people I just mentioned than you will with charismatics or Pentecostal folk. And so these are the people you should minister to, minister to everybody. But I tell you what, go out and be evangelistic. Minister the word of God, the revelation of God. You'll see manifestations of God's anointing, power, and presence. And so let me continue sharing with you because uh, Jesus heals Amen. Um, categories of diseases. For example, um, let me say this. Um, it says here that Jesus healed every kind of sickness and every kind of disease among the people. And so Jesus healed, uh, they brought to Jesus all sick people that were taken with different diseases. Listen, Jesus wants to heal people with bone diseases. Jesus wants to heal people with blood diseases. Jesus wants to heal people with organ diseases, skin diseases, muscle diseases, uh, glandular diseases, uh, uh, ligaments. And so when you're thinking, let's even think about 1 Corinthians chapter 12, gifts, plural, of healings, plural. And not the gift of miracles, but the working of miracles, which means you've got to know how to work it. You can have gifts of healings for particular diseases. And I, I have literally seen Jesus heal many bone diseases. A, uh, 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 organ diseases. You know, I've seen um, uh, skin heal, muscle heal. Amen. I, I, you know, I've seen all kinds of miracles that Jesus would do. Then it says here, torments. The Greek word here for torments means people in pain. So, so Jesus can heal people in spiritual pain, mental pain, emotional pain, physical pain. And then um, uh, those possessed with devils. Uh, Daimonetsiae, those that are demonized. There are cases where you have to cast out a demon in order for the person to be physically healed. A uh, good example of this is the woman who was completely bent over. Jesus, uh, the word of God says that the woman had a spirit of infirmity. Jesus speaks the word, woman, you are free from your infirmity. Jesus lays hands on her and she's straight up. The demon of infirmity, the demon of disease leaves her body and then she can be healed. In some cases, you're praying for people, they will not be healed unless you identify the demon spirit of disease, expel it, and then the person becomes well. Then it says Jesus healed the, uh, the uh, lunatic. In the original language, it's moonstruck. And really, what it's referring to is mental illnesses. For example, like depression and anxiety and attention deficit disorder with, uh, with hyperactivity, eating disorders, bulimia, anorexia. Uh, bipolar diseases, what they call manic depressive illness, uh, alcoholism, drug addiction, and related problems, smoking, gambling, learning disabilities. Listen to me carefully. I have seen Jesus touch the depressed and they were instantly delivered. I've seen Jesus touch uh, people who had problems with anxiety, instantly delivered. I've seen Jesus heal, listen, uh, every kind of sickness. I'm talking about schizophrenia, people who had um, uh, audio, visual, what we call hallucinations instantly healed by Jesus. Amen. I've seen Jesus heal alcoholism, drug addiction. 
Amen. Uh, people be delivered from smoking, gambling, what have you. Uh, I've seen Jesus heal people of mental illnesses instantly. And so Jesus does that, and Jesus does it today. Amen. And, and it says here that Jesus also healed palsy or uh, paralysis. In other words, there, uh, there can be a gift of healing and miracles for paralysis. I, 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 I uh, like to tell about this miracle because I was in Borgia, Texas. It was a man 75, 72 years of age. He was very depressed because um, he had had a stroke. He could not straighten out his arm. He was in pain. They brought him in a wheelchair. His daughter-in-law brought him paralyzed. And, and Jesus touches him, and he stretches out his arm, and, and then his pain disappears. Then he gets up, and he walks. And then my wife, Deborah, says, uh, have the daughter-in-law get in the wheelchair. The man grabs the wheelchair and walks his daughter around the church. Then he's running his daughter around the church. And when he leaves the church, he, he walks down the steps carrying his wheelchair because he was healed of paralysis by Jesus Christ. I've seen people with strokes. I remember a case of a woman. Uh, she, she had gone blind because of a stroke. She was healed. Her walking was restored. And so Jesus can, does, and will heal people of every kind of uh, category of sickness and disease. Luke 4.40 says, Now when the sun was setting, Amen. Uh, all they that had any sick with different diseases brought them to Jesus. And Jesus laid his hands upon every single one of them and healed them. And uh, Luke 5.17 says, Great multitudes came together to hear Jesus and to be healed by Jesus of their infirmities. What I like to do is I like for people to come and hear the word. Now, I'm sure for those of you who know the word of the Lord, what I'm saying to you is nothing new. Amen. But I do want to give you um, some of the Greek language, some of the Greek text, so that you can teach others. Amen. You know, we learn from one another. And if there's anything I've learned is this. Whatever you don't receive by direct revelation from God, the Lord causes you to come into a relationship with somebody who has the revelation. So what you don't get by revelation, you get through relationship. And that's why we have to humble ourselves one to another. Amen. And so this is why I like for people to hear the word so that they can be healed by Jesus. And also I like for people to come to a service and see God do one miracle after another because, um, you know, the word of God is preached by what you hear, but also by what you see. And um, it says in Luke six seventeen, Jesus came down with, his, uh, with the people, stood in the uh, plain, and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of Judea, Jerusalem, Tyre, and Zidon, which first came to hear Jesus and to be healed of their infirmities. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. Listen to me carefully. Sometimes people will come to a service and they want you to hurry up and get done with your preaching so you can pray for them to be well. And let me tell you what I say to people. I say, if you can't hear the word, if you can't get the revelation, you won't get the manifestation. You need this revelation because it's the revelation that produces the manifestation. And let me tell you something else I say to people many times. I say, look, if you get healed, it ain't my fault. And if you don't get healed, I don't take the blame because I believe that God works in spite of me. God confirms the word with signs following. Amen. Now, do I want to be obedient to the word of the Lord? Yes. Do I want Jesus to work through me? Yes. But I want to distance myself from the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the lame walking, cancers uh, disappearing, growth disappearing. So I like to tell people God just works uh, in, in spite of me. It's in, in, in spite of my flaws, weaknesses, and defects of character. And yet, I know that I'm just trying to obey the word of the Lord. And uh, I am obeying the word of the Lord. I'm doing what he says. But uh, I want to make sure that people understand that uh, it is Galatians uh, 2.20. I am crucified with Christ, never left or live, yet not I. And that's the important part, yet not I. But Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Two principles of spiritual progress. Faith, dying to self. Have a Jesus life and a Jesus ministry. 
supernatural manifestations.